and open your Bibles to Luke chapter 22. Say, I got it if you got it. Say, I'm slow and I'm still looking if you ain't got it. And I want to begin reading at verse 24. Luke chapter 22, beginning at verse 24. Now there was also a dispute among them as to which of them should be considered the greatest. And he said to them, the kings of the Gentiles exercise lordship over them, and those who exercise authority over them are called benefactors. But not so among you. On the contrary, he who is greatest among you, let him be as the younger, and he who governs as he who serves. For who is greater, he who sits at the table or he who serves? Is it not he who sits at the table? Yet I am among you as the one who serves. But you are those who have continued with me in my trials, and I bestow upon you a kingdom, just as my father bestowed one upon me, that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom and sit on thrones judging the 12 tribes of Israel. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, indeed Satan has asked for you that he may sift you his wheat, but I have prayed for you that your faith should not fail. And when you have returned to me, strengthen your brethren. Wow. Amen. I want to talk about the signs of a significant saint. Ask your neighbor, are you a significant saint? Did you get an answer? All right, you can be seated. In this 22nd chapter of Luke, Jesus is preparing himself and his disciples for his death, his crucifixion. They have the Last Supper, and in the midst of this last meal and dialogue, there is a debate that erupts among the disciples. And here's the debate. They, they are, yes, the Bible says that they are arguing among themselves about who is the greatest. Can you imagine? Here Jesus is about to die, and they are having a discussion. Matter of fact, it's more than a discussion because verse 24 says a dispute among. They were arguing about which one of them was the greatest. And here's what the real question is. The real question is, and here's what they're really talking about, who's going to take over the church after Pastor Jesus is gone? Who's going to lead the ministry after Jesus has passed off the scene? And they're having this discussion among themselves in this debate. And I guess we ought not be surprised because there's a lot of that kind of discussion that goes on even in church today about who's the best, who's the greatest, who's the best singer, who's the best preacher, who's, which choir is the best, which, who prays the best, who looks the best, who dresses the best. Church is filled, church is filled with power and position discussions. Envy and jealousy and malice and hatred and deceit is rampant in the church, it's ramped, it's ramped up. It's rampant because people want to be significant. People want to be important. Go on and preach, Pastor. The truth be told, many of us have neglected things, our families, our homes, our health, as we chased after significance. We will abuse ourselves, pierce ourselves, cut ourselves up, tattoo ourselves, so we can be considered significant to other people. Go on and preach, Pastor. I think I will. I have to acknowledge that I have violated myself. I have violated the principles myself of neglecting my wife and my family as I ran after trying to get connected and known by and meeting with significant people trying to be and wanting to be significant but I thank God that even though I messed up we serve a God who gave me another chance <laughs> 
Somebody say amen. Thank God for another chance. These disciples hanging around Jesus are having this shocking discussion to me. It is amazing to me that they're talking about it. And Jesus responds to them in this section of scripture that I want to talk about today. Matter of fact, he starts off, and this is not the, the gist of my message today, I, I'm going to skip over verses 25, 6, and 7, and 8, but can I, just, can I just mention them for a moment? Can I just mention verse 25, 26, and 27 for just a minute? I'm wondering if y'all would just let me talk about it, even though it's not the main point I want to talk about. I just want to say something about what Jesus said in response to their discussion. They're arguing about who's the greatest. And Jesus says, let me tell you, greatness is not measured by who is served, but by who is the servant. Yeah, I, I didn't think y'all would get that too well. I knew that it would be a little tough for that to digest because in church today, people don't like to serve. They want to be served. Yeah, we, we don't mind being served. We want the ushers to find a seat for us. We want the parking lot ministry to help us get our car parked, help us find a parking space. We want the choir to be on top of it. We want them to be jumping. We want the pastor to preach, but we're not willing to serve. See, we want to come in and get the benefits of service, but we're not willing to put anything back in the service. Go on and preach, Pastor Jenkins. But that, I just thought I would just throw that out for free. Y'all ought to take some time and celebrate and thank God for the people in this church who serve to help make your experience significant. You ought to thank the usher sometime instead of giving them so much drama. You ought to say thank you for serving. You ought to thank the security parking lot people for helping you find a parking space instead of ignoring them and parking where you want to park anyway. You ought to stop complaining about the choir and thank God that some of the non-singing people are willing to get in the choir and sound good among people who do know how to sing. But Jesus says to them in response to this discussion that the disciples are having about who's the greatest he drops a bomb on them after he talks about this whole thing about servanthood then he drops a major bomb on them that's what i want to talk about you with you today he drops a bomb on them and he says to them in verse number 29 and 30 i like this he says and i bestow upon you a kingdom just as my father bestowed one upon me i love that verse right there that you may eat and drink of my table at my table in my kingdom and sit on thrones judging the 12 tribes of Israel. I love that. Jesus is responding to their debate and here's what he tells them. I'm, I'm putting, I got, he, he, the first thing he tells them is one of the signs. It's the first sign I'm going to talk about of a significant saint. And it is the fact that when you are a significant saint, you have point one, a determined destiny. Somebody say determined destiny. <laughs> Try that again. Say I have a determined destiny. Say it again, I have a determined destiny. You have a destiny that has been determined by God. And look at what Jesus says right here in verse 29. He says, y'all are arguing about over who's the greatest, but he says in verse 29, and I bestow upon you a kingdom. Now this, those words right there are enough to shout about. Verse number 29, I bestow upon you a kingdom. I, I bestow, I smear, I confer, I appoint, I grant, I give to you. Listen, this is what you got to know. When you, are a, when, you have an, when you are a child of God, when you are a significant saint, you got to come to grips with the recognition that God confers something upon you and he says, I am bestowing upon you a kingdom. In the same way my father bestowed upon me, he says, I'm going to give it to you. And here's the deal. The, his father gave him a kingdom, and he said the same way that my father gave one to me, God said, Jesus says, I'm going to give one to you. Now, why is that important? It's important because so many people are out chasing significance that they fail to realize that the significance that you are going to have, God has already bestowed it upon you.
I spent hours chasing after trying to hook up with certain people and get to meet certain people and going to this meeting and that meeting and trying to connect with this person, trying to be significant. And when I come and look back over my life, nothing that I have been able to achieve in my life has been because of anybody that I met during the course of my life, but it has been because the anointing of the Almighty God has been bestowed on me. Y'all didn't get that. Y'all don't understand that. Y'all, 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 because y'all would have been shouting. Y'all would have been understanding it. I need to make it plain to you that it's important that you understand that when God gives you a destiny, when he gives you an assignment, when he bestows upon you a kingdom, you got to get excited about that. You got to recognize that that is an important deal. And when God bestows it upon you, no devil in hell can stop you from achieving what God has for you. I wish I had an amen somewhere from somebody. I know why y'all can't shout because y'all don't know what a kingdom is. Let me tell you what a kingdom is. The word kingdom in the, in the Greek means this. Kingdom means royalty. It means the, a realm. It means to rule. It means that God gives you a realm of royalty to rule in, a realm of royalty to rule in, a place for you to function in. And as a matter of fact, here's what it means, here's how I, I, I translate it, that it means that God puts you in a place where you function in your zone. That's what a kingdom is. Here's what God is saying, I'm gonna put you in a place, I'm gonna anoint you that when you do what you do, what I've called you to do, can't nobody do what you do like you do when you do it. Y'all didn't get that right there. When you get in your zone, when you get in your zone, see your problem is you try to get in everybody else's lane and everybody else's zone and you want to sing like that person and walk like that person and look like that person and dress like that person and act like that person and preach like that person. Be who God called you to be. Somebody tell your neighbor, be who God called you to be. Can, can't nobody beat me in being John K. Jenkins Sr. Can't nobody. I'm, I'm the best me I can be. I, you, can't be you can't beat me being me. You can't beat me being me. And I'm a bad me. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm a bad me. Tell, tell your neighbor, I'm a bad me. I might not be everything you want me to be, but I'm, you can't beat me being me. I don't want to be you. I don't want to look like you. I don't want to dress like you. I don't want your husband. I don't want your wife. I don't want your kids. I don't want your car. I don't want your house. I want what God has for me. I want to be me. And the sooner you learn to be you, y'all stop trying to be like everybody else. Stop piercing yourself and changing your hair and fixing up your hair because you saw it in the magazine. Look, the person in the magazine, that's their hairstyle. Get your own hairstyle. Get your own weed. Come on, talk to me. Get your own weed. God called you to be Jesus said I am bestowing I am granting I'm appointing to you your own zone and I'm in my zone I'm in my zone right now I am in my zone I'm can nobody else be a better pastor of First Baptist Church of Glenarden right now at this season than John K Jenkins that's no slur on anybody else it, that, that's not a slap on nobody else it's just that this is my season this is my time and this is what I'm anointed to do. I ain't jealous of nobody. I ain't never felt threatened by nobody. I don't have to cut nobody off to protect my pastorate. I'm walking in my zone. And when I'm in my zone, I ain't worried about nobody else. I'm not concerned about nobody else. I'm not jealous of nobody else. I'm not threatened by nobody. Y'all gotta stop worrying about somebody taking your job, taking your house, taking your stuff. Just be comfortable that God has conferred 
a kingdom on you. Woo! Y'all got that? Yes, sir. High five three or four folks say, I'm a bad me. Come on, tell them. I don't have to fight to be me. I don't have to act like I'm me. I can just be me. I don't have to argue to be me. I don't have to debate about being me. I don't have to have any discussions about being me. I just want to be me. You ain't got to like me. You ain't got to want me. You ain't got to need me. You ain't got to want to be around me. I'm just going to be me. And I am who I am. Take it or leave it. I'm me. Here I is. I've got a determined destiny. I'm going to get into my zone. But then, I don't want you to think you can just float right into your destiny. Matter of fact, when you get in your destiny, Here's what we get rewarded for. We get rewarded for operating in our zone. Let me back up for a second. Can, are y'all listening to me? What did I just now say? You get rewarded for operating in your zone. How you know that, Pastor? Because right, verse 30, Jesus said, uh, I'm going to bestow upon you your, your, a kingdom so that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom and sit on thrones judging the 12 tribes of Israel. When you be you, and you function the way God called you to be, when Jesus comes to rule in his kingdom, he's gonna pick the people who function in their zone to help him rule his kingdom. Amen, Amen. y'all didn't get that, y'all. That went over some of y'all's head, but some of y'all to get that, you might wake up in the middle of the night and say, oh yeah, I gotta be me, so that when I get to the, we get to Jesus' kingdom, I want him to pick me, because I learned how to be me when I was back then in my life. I wanna be me, and I'm gonna function in me in my zone when we get into his kingdom. Y'all ain't got that. I wish I got somebody who understood that. And so, but now, but here's the deal. Unfortunately, the devil's not gonna sit back and watch you into your zone. How many of y'all know that? How many of y'all know that the devil is going to do everything he can to try to stop you from reaching your, your, your kingdom? And, and that is reflected in verse 31. I want to read verse 31. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, indeed Satan has asked for you that he may sift you as wheat. Now, now I'm calling this point two, desired destruction. Now what does that mean? Here's what I'm saying. Yes, I have a determined destiny, but what everybody here needs to know that there's somebody who desires your destruction. Don't get surprised, don't get shocked. Anticipate that when you do what it is God has called and anointed you to do, and you get in your zone, there are going to be some player haters. There are going to be some people who are not going to like it, and especially the devil. The devil doesn't like the fact that you're achieving and, and walking and functioning in what God called you to be. Matter of fact, in the verse, Jesus is sitting around, listen to this. Jesus is sitting around talking with the disciples, and he turns to Peter. And he turns to Peter and calls him out by name. Simon, Simon. Simon Peter was his name. Simon, Simon. Look at verse 31. He says, Simon, Simon, indeed Satan has asked for you that he may sift you as wheat. You see, you see, <laughs> your anointing is so awesome. And what God's going to do through you being you is so awesome that the devil has approached Jesus and asked for you by name. 
Y'all, y'all ain't getting that. Y'all got to get that in your heart. You got to understand that the fact that I am a significant saint, it makes me a target. If I wasn't doing nothing, wasn't going nowhere, if I wasn't achieving anything, if I did not represent to the uh, threat to the enemy's kingdom, he wouldn't bother me. But because through my life, souls are getting saved and marriages are getting put back together and people are coming off drugs and lives are being transformed and hookers are coming off the streets and drug addicts are coming off drugs and alcoholics are leaving their alcohol alone and people who are suicidal are wanting to live when you do something significant the devil is going to try to take you out Who am I talking to this morning? Somebody needs to know that you represent a threat to the devil's kingdom and he's asked for you by name. Simon, Simon, he's asked for you that he might sift you as wheat. He wants to put you through a sifting process you see when the when the farmer is harvesting his wheat sometimes the tares that's the wheat wannabe <laughs> grows up with the wheat he lets them grow together he harvests them together because they will get separated in the sifting process <laughs> he tastes the harvest and put it in a device called a sifter. And the sifter shakes and shakes, and then the sifter, the person working the shifter, tosses in the air the wheat and the tares. The wind comes and blows away the tares, but the wheat falls back to the shift sifter. There's a shaking that goes on to loosen and separate it is a shaking that separates the wheat from the tares. It is a shifting and a shaking and a shifting and a shaking and hell and high water and trouble on every side and trial after trial. It is a shifting and a shaking. Then the wheat and the tares are tossed in the air. The wind blows away the tares, but the wheat falls back to the sifter. Y'all missing it. You know you are a significant saint because you did not get blown away by the wind. You are still in the sifter. You didn't run away from God. You didn't quit church. You didn't throw the Bible away. You didn't cuss people out. You've been going through hell, but you're still here. Somebody high five your neighbor say, I've been through some stuff. I've shed some tears. I had some stuff I didn't understand, but I'm still here. I'm here. I got tears in my eyes, but I'm here. I don't know what the future holds, but I'm here. I've been through all kinds of stuff, but I'm here. Who am I talking to today? Somebody high five somebody, say I'm still here. Tell them I'm still here. I'm still in the midst of it. I must be the real deal. I must be the real McCoy. I must be the real wheat. I must be a significant saint because I'm still here. I'm still in the sifter. I still got stuff going on. I still got troubles on every side, but I'm not in distress. I haven't lost my mind. I should have lost my mind. I should have had a nervous breakdown. I should have told some people some stuff, but I'm still here. Woo. I wish I had somebody that would shout with me for just a moment right there. Somebody ought to give God the praise and say, I'm still here. I'm still in the fight. She don't give me a high five. I appreciate that. 
I'm still in the fight. I'm still in the battle. I'm still giving him the praise. I'm still giving him the glory. Devil, you're going to have to do a whole lot more than that to make me stop giving him praise. If that's the best you have, that ain't going to make me walk away from the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. He's been too good for me and too good to me. I will not walk away from him. I love him. He heard my cry. Pitied every one of my groans. I will not stop blessing him. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise will continually be in my mouth. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Hallelujah, I'm still here. Hallelujah, he tried to destroy me. He tried to take me out. He tried to kill me. He tried to take your marriage, tried to take your kids, tried to take your career, tried to take your job, tried to take your sanity. But here's where we need to shout. He tried to take all of that, but because I have a determined destiny, I ain't going nowhere. Come on and give him praise, somebody. Somebody help me thank God that he gave you what you needed to still be here. I'm still here. I still love him. Amen. And while I'm on this point, the devil's trying to take some of your kids. He said, if I can't get you and can't get your spouse, he said, he'll go after your kids. But devil, you can't have our kids. We're fighting for our kids. We're praying for our kids. We're believing the deliverance for our kids. You can't have our kids. Somebody say you can't have it. Say it real loud, you can't have it. He tried to take your health from you. He thought if you got sick, you would stop praising him. He thought if you got laid off your job, you would stop praising him. He thought he'd do a whole bunch of things that would take you out. But we're still here. Let me close. I'm tired now. Still here.
come on lift your hands and give God a praise for just a moment say I must be special I must have significance all this hell I'm going through I must be significant you must be special I know some of y'all are not moved and you can't celebrate all the hell you're going through that's why I need to give you this last point in verse 32 don't sit down just keep standing verse 32 Jesus sticks his butt in this desired destruction I like when God sticks his butt in things. Tell your neighbor, God got a big old butt. Tell him. <laughs> Some years ago, young people, you don't know nothing about this, but when we was growing up, there used to be a, a dance called the butt. Y'all know it? He was all doing the butt, da, da. Doing the butt. Doing the butt. Jesus is about to do the but but he says I have prayed for you <laughs> the devil tried to take you out but I have prayed for you I've talked to the father on your behalf I have told Jesus because Jesus says I've told the father I've gone to his throne and I've discussed your situation with my father and I've prayed that your faith will not faint and when you come through this you are going to be able to help somebody You better get ready. You're going through some hell. You're crying some tears. It's difficult right now. Some of you right now are in the midst of trying to be destroyed. But lift up your heads, O oh ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors. The King of glory shall come in, and he shall plead your case. He shall fight your battles. He shall resolve your problems. You will be a winner and not a loser. You will be the victor and not the victim. You will be up and not down. You will win and not lose. He has prayed for you. Somebody better go ahead and thank God that he's prayed for you. He's seen your situation. He has seen your pain. He has seen your tears. He has not abandoned you. He has not forsaken you. But he says, I have prayed for you. y'all are but I'm thanking God that when the saints don't pray for me Jesus is praying for me he says I've prayed for you and matter of fact I like what he says he says I've prayed for you that your faith would not faint and when you have returned to me strengthen your brothers he said when you come up out of here you're gonna be a testimony <laughs> You're going to be a testimony. You are going to be a testimony. Who am I preaching to today? God is making your story a testimony. Somebody else is going to be blessed because of what you've been through. And because of the story that you tell. I look back over my life. And I know that all the things I've gone through, God's using it to help me be a blessing to somebody else. And guess what, I went through it. I didn't go to it, I went through it, come on. You ain't going to a trial, you're going through a trial.
You're going to go through it. You're going to go through it. You're going to make it through it. I know your flesh says you can't take it. I know your flesh says you won't make it through. But I decree and preach and prophesy you're going to come out better coming out of it than you were when you went into it. When you come out, you shall be like pure gold. When you come out, you will be better. I don't know what I'm preaching to today, but somebody needs Jesus. Come on down here. You need to get saved. Come here right now. You need to rededicate. Come here right now. The Spirit of God said, come right now. This is the moment. This is the day. You need to rededicate. Come right now. Right now. You're not sure? Come now. Come now. Come right now. You are about to quit. You're about to walk away. You're about to take your life. God says you shall live and not die. Get out of your seat and come down here now, now. Yeah, that's right. Come on. I see you. Come on. Come on. Amen. It's not an accident that you're here. God brought you here. It's not an accident. It is not an accident. Come on, encourage them while they're coming, y'all. Encourage them. Yeah, they're still coming. Come on, come on. This is the time. This is the day. Don't put it off. That's right. Come on. Come, come, come. Come get right with Jesus. Come say yes to him. Surrender. Unsaved, come. You never accepted him, come. You need to rededicate, come. You're not sure, come. You already saved, you need a church, this is a good time to come to. This is a good church. Tell your neighbor, this here is a good church. Tell them, it's a good church. It's a good church.